This time we continue sailing north along Australia's east coast from Port Macquarie. We put up a fight against the Eastern Australian Current. Overnight next to the historic jail in beautiful Trial Bay, have a much needed rest stop in Coffs Harbour and sail into the Clarence River between the towns of Iluka and Yamba. Hi, I'm Ali. When my husband Paul was made redundant from his job, I decided to take time off as well to fulfil our dream of sailing and exploring the east coast of Australia. The adventure has only just begun and you can join us. We're the Lobbies. That's our boat cat Scuttlebutt. And together, we're We're sailing sailing champagne champagne on on ice. ice. Hit the subscribe button to see our weekly clips. Sailing past Hat Head on our way to Southwest Rocks, something didn't quite add up. We felt like we were making good speed through the water, but we were actually travelling two knots slower than normal. The culprit? The Eastern Australian Current. So instead of taking six hours to sail the 36 mile distance, the current pushed the trip out to eight hours. Scuttles wasn't impressed with the delay, but it did give us some extra time for reading books and editing videos. Finally, arriving at Smoky Cape, it actually looked smoky because of the salty air rising up its flanks. As we sailed around the corner towards a beautiful sunset, the historic Trial Bay Jail came into view with its convict-made breakwater stretching out beneath, sheltering the bay from the ocean swells. Trial Bay is wide and shallow, and in the right weather it's the perfect anchorage for crews to stop and rest for the night. The water was also warm, another indicator of that current which hugs the coast here. The jail opened in 1886 with the purpose of supplying workers to build a one and a half kilometre breakwater to turn Trial Bay into a harbour for East Coast shipping. But after 17 years and only 300 metres of wall, the breakwater project and the jail were abandoned. In 1915, the jail was pressed into service again as an internment camp for men of German heritage during the First World War. An interesting history and a beautiful place to camp or drop the anchor nearby. The next morning had us scooting along at nine knots with a steady sail wester and what appeared to be a slight countercurrent helping us along. Squalls throughout the day washed the salt off the decks and the sea started stacking up a bit as we approached the entrance to Coffs Harbour. Coming into Coffs Harbour by sea is quite dramatic. Corfs Islet looms large just south of the entrance and the breakwater looks like a medieval wall, ramparts protecting Coffs Harbour from invaders. Skirting around the defences, we anchored just off the beach next to the old jetty, which was used to export timber and other products up until 1975. The rolly night in the harbour had us up early and threading the needle through the solitary islands on our way north to Yamba. It was rainy and rough as we sailed on under a double reefed main and headsail. Even scuttles seemed to be holding on. After an uncomfortable and wet 58 miles and eight and a half hours, the skyline of Yamba was a welcome sight. The water at the entrance to the Clarence was confused and a bit rough, giving us an exciting few minutes. The champagne surfed her way in and we were quickly ascending the river and entering the Iluka Boat Harbour between the narrow gap in the rock walls. Well, it was really rough out there today coming up from Coffs Harbour. We had waves crashing over the boat and I don't think the herbs are going to survive after their dousing in salt water. But after a big day, it's really nice to be here in Iluka Boat Harbour. It's a really interesting little sailor's harbour. There's lots of little cruising boats, a few dreamers, a few fixer-upperers, but the 
place has a really nice vibe and it's nice to be here at the end of the day. The fishing fleet's in here as well. And it's just the place for a calm night and I think we're going to spend a few days exploring Iluka and Yamba. Next time, we see the sights of Iluka. We meet some of the locals, try out the local fish, see how not to go sailing and pay our respects on Anzac Day.